Welcome back. It is still the run-up. Uh, taking it straight to where we left off just before the break, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has promised to roll out measures to tackle vote buying at the polling units on election day in 2023. Even as it vowed that violators of laws and campaign finances would be dealt with uh, frontally, INEC identified four areas of concern to Nigerians as far as the 2023 general elections was concerned. Identified such areas as security, campaign finance, technology, the permanent voters' cards, as well as the assurances that their votes would count ultimately on election day. INEC, uh, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, the Nigerian Police Force, the Inter-Party Advisory Council, and the Inspector General of Police have identified the need to tackle vote buying in order to overcome a major obstacle to free, fair and credible elections in Nigeria. And just recently, uh, foremost legal luminary, Afer Babalola, has said that Nigeria's forthcoming presidential election slated for February 25th will be won by the highest spender and not the best candidates among the contenders. I, I, I want to say that there's been a lot of misunderstanding of you know, what he is supposed to mean by that, if I'm supposed to get into his head. But then these are the question, uh, questions that will be answered today on this um, segment of the run-up. And of course, we still have um, Mr. DG with us. Uh, do you see a situation where vote buying, as it is known in Nigeria, can totally be eradicated? Hmm. Well, vote buying as it is in Nigeria can be uh, eradicated because there was no much incidence of vote buying before. So if we have lived without it before, we can also live without it again. But that won't be anytime soon because the people that are to stem the tide of vote buying are the main beneficiaries of it. Mm. So that makes it quite very d d difficult for you mm. to stop the trend. And with the rising rate of poverty, with the um, high poverty rate, high unemployment rate, it will be very difficult for vote buying to stop because money is an essential commodity. Everybody needs um, one form of cash or the other to survive, to fulfill their um, essential um, utilities in life. And because money is so important, much like an oxygen in nozules, and we have a situation whereby we have um, a society whereby the the each bulk of the cash we have is flowing among the political circle. In that situation, it will be difficult to to, to to stop vote buying because it's like telling somebody to stop the source of his own power, mm -hmm. the source of um, his own his own world. And that's why right now we have a lot of. Um, Politicians, people are not joining politics for the sake of passion. They are joining it because the premium we pay on politics is very high. So that's why we have a lot of political investors. You see people selling their houses. You see people going to a bank to borrow loan because they want to um, win the election at all costs because they know immediately they get there, they are going to cash out. But I think one of the ways that we can cover vote by is um, enlightenment and the personal decision on the part of the electorate um the there's a yoba adage that says sometimes you may need to stay hungry today so that you don't stay hungry tomorrow so if the nigerian electorate are enlightened that a you won't use me as your source of investment because if you get there you are definitely going to see times 100 or times 200 or even in millions of the money that you are spending by the way why should nigerian electorate receive money to vote maybe i they give you three thousand they give you five thousand at the end of the day if you multiply uh, if you divide five thousand naira by four years mm -hmm. you, you realize that maybe the calculation may be maybe i wouldn't be surprised if it's 10 naira or so so imagine you selling your birth right sorry your right to um apply good roads your right to electricity your right to good education for your children 
just because of this, the sake of a little sum of money. So I think stopping vote buying will start from the decisiveness of the Nigerian electorate because if we look up to the political class who controls the um, security agencies in a de democratic system, it will be difficult for vote buying to to stop most especially our politicians on the seas that um, a system works they are definitely going to continue the trend vote buying became alarming um, at the um uh, election that ushered um, former governor finally in the next election in or show that ushered governor Oyetola in you could see the the um the spread of vote buying and now it has become a kind of like negative political philosophy and my fear is that in the rural areas people now see election day as a means of cashing out there are some people that are already waiting now that during the election they must collect their five thousand naira, else they, they will vote so we are imbibing a negative political culture so i think the civil societies and maybe um, a coalition of small small political parties that are not as rich as um, the, the the major political parties has to go all out to educate the people to enlighten the people to make them see reasons why they shouldn't sell their battery but i don't think much has been done in that regard and i think this trend 23 i support the, for the position of the legal luminary that money is going to play a major role we've seen if for example i was watching a political campaign some time ago um, in the east and it went viral the politician when he was to say that he said we will, we will give them money and they vote for us and i felt i felt so bad that how can you limit um, you winning an election not based on manifesto not based on policy and you could limit the interest of the people that you just give them money mm. so i think it has to start from the people that say when they begin to shame money then the politicians will devise another strategy i've said it before that it's like a student politicians are like students if you don't take your student with some a bit of um eye office and some discipline no student wants to read they just want the grade so no politicians really wants to perform so long as they can cut corners so i believe that if the nigerian electorate begin to reason like the electorate in other climbs uh, um of the world that money does not play a major role your integrity your um your experience your capacity should come before money then the, the politicians will have to change strategy but right now with the bad economy and i think the some of this economic situation is a strategy for the politician because when you make the people angry mm -hmm. towards the election they would have no choice than to just you know when people are hungry just give them rice and um, gary and um um granota and maybe thirty thousand to to people like you that means mm -hmm nothing maybe you even give people more than that every day but the reality is with the situation nigeria is that means a lot to some families that's like a gold to, to some families and when you are poor your defense is weak people can easily direct you that go this way it's not it's, it's not possible for somebody to come in now and say take ten thousand naira go this way you will question the person because you are educated you have some cash in your pocket you are well exposed but that is not the case for the for the nigerian electorate so we see that vote buying begins to play a major role because the politicians have looked at what the people really need and they are now using it they are now kind of like playing on their vulnerability which i think is sad so it's the people that will rise up in defense of themselves not looking at the politicians and the, and the security agencies because these are the major beneficiaries of vote buying itself okay <clears throat> you said this campaign this evangelism so to speak should be taken to everybody education of the electorate and all that but i don't know if you've ever heard this uh, the saying that not be tifa tif naboro as in that is pure stealing, but you're mm. just giving it a new name. Now, why I'm saying this is that some people see some actions of politicians as not actions that are buying their vote. So we need to define what we really mean when we say vote buying. Is it the money that you give? Because someone on this show the other time said that it's only money that is given on the day of election that can be called vote buying but is that really vote buying because if i'm talking to an aged woman back home in the village and i'm telling her the 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 dangers of vote buying i should be able to list some of the things that constitute vote buying so if we are defining vote buying what would it be 
so that people that are going out to tell the people will know the kind of things to say to the people that need to, to hear it. For me, I think vote buying is if you offer anything of any kind, whether financial or material, in order to um, convince people in a particular direction, then that is vote buying. If you offer somebody rice, that is not financial, but that is material, that is vote buying. So if you try to convince people in a particular way, not by mere conviction, but by your policies, conversing is allowed. I can walk up to you and converse with you, oh, please vote for my candidate, we'll do this, this is how we are going to do it. That's fine, it's allowed, it's legal. But once I begin to kind of like um, offer you, or I begin to monetize you, or I begin to um, blackmail you, which some government does, to their civil servant. We've seen a situation in, in, some, yeah, in some state, I don't want to mention it, that they give them a, a, a tax that for you to retain your job in this civil service, go and win your polling unit, go and win your ward. And you see on the, uh, on the election day that um, the, the, the civil servant will be using their own personal money to buy drinks for people. Will not be using that to convince people that please, don't let me lose my job. You know, and because people in the um, in the um, area knows them, they tend to kind of like vote out of pity because their respective workplace has blackmailed them that if you don't win your constituency, you will um, you will lose your job. Some even go as far as telling them that bring the result of your polling unit, and I think that is um, vote buying. That is sad, and this happens in. The first thing, I don't want to be mentioning, but I'm sure some of them are watching me now and they know themselves, they know what I'm saying. So, vote buying comes in different ways. If you um, try to cajole someone based on their need, if you are unemployed now and I come to you and I can, um, begin to converse you that, don't worry, you know, if you vote for us, if we enter, I will help you find a job in the local government. That's vote buying. Because I'm using your vulnerability to influence your decision you are not voting out of conviction you are voting based on what you want to get based on what you want to benefit based on the picture of benefit that i've placed before you so we have vote buying that is pre-election we have vote buying that is during the election and we have post-election vote buying that would have taken place on the election date itself so this different form of vote buying i think should be stopped if people are allowed to make their decision based on without any influence you can just converse okay this is the um candidate a comes to you this is my program candidate b comes to you this is the plan and, and candidate c you can easily sit down and look at it look at the political party the political ideology the um past experience the capacity of the candidate and make an informed decision without nothing influencing you so far as something is influencing you that is either financial or material then that is vote by Hmm. To me. Okay. Um, the, 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 there's a conversation around. Uh, Ina came out, I think it was on Monday, and said that young and underaged voters are going to be arrested, and even their parents as well. Uh, it has raised a lot of dust, you know, in the mainstream media and even on social media. Uh, and also, that is another level to irregularities, you know, during elections. Uh, do you think that that idea of arresting underaged children who are votes, who, you know, who come out on election days to vote, do you think that works? Uh, what do you make of that decision? Well, um, I'm tired of hearing that um, we will, we will. I think what I want to hear is we have. Mm. That's what I want to hear because um, underage voting, particularly in the north, has been very prominent for years. So, uh, and all we hear is we have. Well, we 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 no, we are tired of that. We don't believe in that anymore. We want to see we have arrested so 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 and so 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 and so are in court facing charges now. Um, while I was doing my uh, NYC um, over a decade ago, in Kano to be precise, and there was this voter registration going on then then a young boy walked up to me and my um assistant he wants to register and i look at the age of the boy that this guy is not up to um 18 um and i asked him um i think um 
the what Shikara should be age. I forgot it's a long time ago. I asked him, um, Sumanka, Suman Baba, then Shikara. You know, the guy said 18. So I was very annoyed. Then I had to spank him us. He didn't say the truth. I gave him the second one. By the time the third one landed on him, then he confessed 15, 15, 15. <laughs> and I'm like, come on. Why will you come and register when you know you are not um, up to 18? Then the guy ran away. But that was at the risk of my own life at that point in time because I realized that the, um, so some of these um, um, registrants are not well oriented. They see it as their right, whether they are of age or not. So their political leaders, religious um, leaders, traditional leaders have not educated them. So if you fail to register them and you are not part of that community, you are at your own risk because they were saying it as you are denying them part of their legitimate right, not knowing that they are not up to age. So I think vote buying is prevalent from the experience that I had in the North at that point in time. A large number of people um, involved with that. Then there's another way that they define whether you are um, eligible to vote or not, which is against the provision of the Constitution. They marry early. Now, in fairness to them, they can choose to do what they want. That is their so-called culture, in quote. I'm not against it, but if an underage girl marries and she has a child, they, has, they automatically assume that that girl is like that. eligible to vote. So if a 13 year old girl is carrying a baby, they believe that, oh, this is an housewife and automatically she has a child, so she's old enough to vote. So there's been less education where this um, underage registration is very pre prevalent. There's been less education of the populace to make them understand that it is by age, it is not by marriage, it is not your birthright until you reach a certain age. And the security agencies and um, the, the political class would be reluctant to kind of like arrest and prosecute people because mm. once it goes into the community, they will tag it as witch hunt, they will tag you as you trying to reduce their voting population, and that has electoral consequence for whichever party is in power. For instance, if the um, um, APC under the, under the um, administration of President Mohamed Buhari tried to take such step, now, across the northern states where that underage um, registration is prevalent, what we go to um, the mosques, the, tra the, the traditional ruler that Mohamed Buhari is trying to reduce their voting power, population and that has serious electoral consequence for the APC. So when government even wants to take action, when they think of the electoral consequence and every government will always weigh the electoral consequence first, most especially when it's at the eve of the um, election. So I think the words that were said is just to kind of like put Nigerian masses or the um, educated ones that we are doing something but to me from my observation over the years as a political scientist and knowing how those underage registration comes by and the consequence of removing them from the list i think nothing will be done sincerely well but now a final question now before we wrap up uh, what will where will we start from because there's only so much INEC can do and National Orientation Agency is more like dead because I, I, we don't hear them anymore. If they, they are performing and they're doing a lot of things, I, I don't think I have heard them so much in very sensitive issues. So, but the country is ours. It's not theirs. It's ours, everybody's. What, where do we start from to educate people to know what is right and what is wrong, at least in the few days that we have to the general election and even beyond? How do we get it right? Where do we go to? I think one of the ways to get it right is because it is a democracy and it is an all-commerce affairs. So long as you are 18, whether you are educated or not, whether you are a refraff, a nuisance, you are eligible to vote. So because of that, we see that um, at the lower level of the population, the poor, there is this disorientation. And if people can do this massive orientation at the grassroots for people to understand, for example, if a child is able to know 
that the failures of government, the lack of education, contributes to what turned in or into a tout. Definitely the tout will know that the politician that he is supporting to win the election is even his greatest enemy. Mm -hmm. Because if the economy has been fair, if there has been jobs, if the um, education is solid and, make a, a, and made a national policy, if government in Nigeria is working at its ease in other clan, most likely he will not have become a tout. So you find a, a situation that because of lack of orientation, you see a tout working to empower his enemy that contributed in making him a tout. You know, so we have a situation whereby things are going from bad to worse. So I think a lot has to be done as regards um, orientation of the masses because they, you, you see some of these masses supporting, willing to die for people that have kept them in chains, mm -hmm. economic chain, financial chain, political chain, and they are still supporting them. Why? Because it's from their region or religion. All these things have to change. Then we need to have leaders that are truly leaders. If you are a religious leader, if you mount the pulpit, what are you saying? To the people so we, we have to look at the sources of learning apart from the school people listening more to their religious leaders every year than they listen to the president so we have to look at the source of education the family the church the monks the society the traditional rulers what are they saying what are they recommending so when that is in place maybe a new orientation that we give birth to a new society, we now evolve. So it starts with the grassroots. And I think that maybe if civil societies or NGOs that are rich can also come into the picture to say, oh, if they can provide one or two amenities and maybe orientate the people that this thing that we've done, it is government that is supposed to, to do that. That is if government will not say they are um, trying to um, pay them bad, I think people will now begin to see right. that power belongs to them. I think the orientation on the part of the masses is very, very important. Orientation is very important, and this is where we... Uh, I wish this conversation didn't have to enter, because <laughs> it was, you know, uh, very eye-opening. Uh, but thank you so much, Dr. Uh, Deji Omoshola, for joining us today on the run-up. It was thank really you nice having me. you. My pleasure. Uh, it is still the run-up. Uh, we're going to go on a quick break. <laughs>